Ocean Hills at its best is when we are in it together. Make sure to see them in, under the orange tent today afterwards. Grab your program, Proverbs chapter 3. All right, I got 12 minutes. Here we go. You ready? Hang on. It's going to be like drinking out of a fire hose this morning, but you can do this. Proverbs chapter 3, my son, the conversation is between a father and a son in these early chapters of Proverbs. Solomon is the, uh, uh, credited to be the author. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love, let love, let love, let love and faithfulness never Never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit or acknowledge him. And he will make your paths straight. That's the word of God. That last, those last two verses. Some of, how many of you have those last two memorized? From when you were, yeah. I mean, these are the most memorized two verses probably in mo most all the Bible. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will make your paths straight. We're going to look at this this morning very briefly as we look at Proverbs. How many of you want to be those two guys? How many of you want to be known as dumb and dumber? Yeah, no, and this whole series is about not becoming that image. Don't be that guy or that gal. How do you avoid becoming that? You avoid becoming that by following God's word. The Proverbs are all about helping us navigate life. They are all about there's a right way to live and there is a wrong way to live. There's a way of wisdom and there's a way of folly. Those who choose the right road are considered by scripture wise. Those who choose the wrong road are considered dumb and dumber and foolish. And so we have a choice in front of us. And Jesus put it this way in Matthew chapter 7. He said, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. That's the dumb road. And many enter through it. I hate those words. They make me uncomfortable. I wish they weren't in there. But, but Jesus is offering us some, some wisdom. He's saying, pay attention. I'm giving you a heads up. The way that everybody's going is the way away from me. And it leads to destruction. He goes on to say in verse 14, but small is the gate, narrow the road that leads to life. That leads to life. He is the life giver, and only a few find it. You know, in the book of Proverbs, the word path or road or way, it's used a hundred times or more. It's a metaphor, it's an image that is really pronounced in the book of Proverbs. It's a theme that doesn't go away. It's descriptive of the spiritual life. The spiritual journey is like walking on a path, on a road. It's taking a journey. That's the metaphor, the language that Solomon uses over and over and over again. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. Maybe if you're taking notes, write this down. Fools think that their own way is right. Fools think that their own way is right. But the wise... Listen to others. Proverbs 14, verse 12, there is a, and here's the word, path. There is a path before each person. Each of us, there's a path that seems right, but it ends in destruction. It ends in destruction. It seems right. It feels right. It might even look right from our perspective. But the question is, are we going to trust God's ways or our own ways? Are we going to trust God's word or our own feelings? And so this morning, what I want to do is give you, I want to walk us through verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will, not might, he will make your path straight. And I'm just framing this, three steps to wisdom, three steps to skillful living. The Proverbs are all about having skill in the way that we live. Let me ask you a question before I jump into this. Where have you learned? Where have you learned to be skillful and successful in living life? Who taught you that? I've shared the story, you know, when I was like eight years old, I took a pair, uh, I was in a, in a store and saw some baseball cards and didn't have money, and I went, oh, I want them, and I stuck them in my pants, and I stole them, and I was walking out, and, and, and the guy behind the counter goes, little, little guy there, uh, I saw you do that, I go, what? And he goes, I saw you put those baseball cards down the front of your pants. I was so scared, I peed my pants. <laughs> I pull out the baseball cards dripping, dripping in urine. And I was sobbing. Who teaches an eight-year-old kid that it's okay to steal? Where did I learn that? The book of Proverbs teaches us right and wrong. If you're a parent in here, you know there's 31 Proverbs, one for every day of the month. If you're not sure where, what to read in the Bible, you go, oh, today's July 7th, read Proverbs 7. Tomorrow's the 8th, read Proverbs 8. It's just when you're not sure where to go, the Proverbs are going to teach you and show you what it means to be mature in your responsibilities and your relationships. Let me say that again. The book of Proverbs is going to show you and your kids how to become mature in your relationships, your most important relationships, and in responsibilities and what's right and what's wrong. So the three steps to skillful living, wisdom, trust in the Lord with all your heart. What does that mean to trust? We don't trust people unless they're trustworthy, right? We would be considered foolish to trust someone who's unreliable, unfaithful, undependable, someone who doesn't keep their promises. But as you read the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, what do you discover? God is faithful. Over and over again, he is faithful. He's dependable. He's reliable. He's a God who keeps his promises. And over and over again, the people of God, we, everyone here, is invited to trust him, to lean on him. I'm trusting this stool right now. I'm putting my weight on it, right? I'm trusting it's going to hold me up. That's what it means to trust God, to lean on, depend on, to believe that he will hold me up. He knows what's best for me. And this, my friends, it includes commitment. Trust in the Lord with what? Some of your heart? What's it say? Say it out loud. All your heart. That's commitment. Whenever we do something with all of our heart, implied in that phrase is commitment commitment. It's like marriage. Trust and commitment go hand in hand, don't they? They go hand in hand. And that's the call of Proverbs. The first step, I don't know where you are spiritually this morning, far from God, maybe on a detour, maybe you're on your way home, maybe you're here and you're saying, I'm all in. But I want you to hear this, the first step to living skillfully, responsibly, having healthy, strong relationships, it's, it's to get the foundation right. It's to trust in the Lord with all your heart. And maybe the question I could ask you is, what are you putting your trust in? This morning when you walked in here, if you were to, if you were to just survey your life, and you go, I'm leaning on and putting my weight on. Is it my, my money, my bank account? Is it my friends? Is it my parents? What is it? Whoa. <laughs> it's probably shaky, I don't know. Second step to wisdom, lean not on your own understanding. What does that mean? Lean not on your own understanding. Does it mean don't use your brain? You become a follower of Jesus and, you, and, and, and you're, you're dumb. Is that what we're signing up for, to become dumb and dumber when we decide to follow Christ? Is that what, lean not on your own understanding? David Hubbard, some of you know David or knew David, uh, used to be the president of Fuller Seminary and... Uh, God, just a, a great mentor. But he wrote a commentary on the book of Proverbs. And, and, and here's his explanation of this phrase. I love it. To lean not on your own understanding means renunciation 
of arrogant self-reliance. Renunciation, I'm letting go of. I'm, 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 I'm stepping away from. I'm not leaning on it. I'm stepping away from and not depending on my own arrogance, my own self-reliance. I'm the man. The Holy Trinity is me, myself, and I. We're saying no. That's what Solomon is saying here. It's a complete renunciation of arrogant self-reliance. Now, does that mean we don't consider our options? Does that mean we don't make intelligent choices? No. But it means we use our God-given abilities and the counsel of others that God puts in our life to make wise, skillful decisions. Really, the key idea in this phrase is we must not think that we know better than God. So is it what I feel or is it what the truth of God's word says? I, got a, I have a decision to make. I feel one way, it's going this way. God's word says, no, it's this way. I have a decision to make. Am I gonna lean on my own understanding or am I gonna trust in the Lord and I'm gonna lean on his understanding and his truth and his ways? And then the third step, in all your ways, it says submit to him. Most of us have memorized this verse, acknowledge him. In all your ways, not some of your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him. What does that mean? Some of you know that I, I in the last year, became a Vespa junkie. I, I got a Vespa last summer, and it's just been so fun riding on this Vespa. But you know what I've learned over the last year? There's a Vespa kind of nod club. There's a scooter nod club. You're cruising, I'm cruising around town, and all of a sudden I'm seeing things I've never seen before. Other people on scooters and motorcycles, they do this. We're, we're at a stop sign. I'm bombing down the street, and I'm now doing the Vespa nod. Is that what this means? Acknowledge him. Hey, God. Hey, what's up, God? Hey, God. Is that, that's what I was thinking it used to mean is, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Hey, God, what's up? Hey, doing the nod. That's not what it means. That is not what this means. It's not about the Vespa nod. The word acknowledge, in all your ways, acknowledge him. That word is the word to know. To know, to know. And here's what that word means. Personal bonding and intimacy. What the writer here, Solomon, is talking about, in all your ways, bond with him. Become intimate with him. In all your ways, know him. Know his heart. Know God's mind, know his heart, know his will, know his ways. Bring Christ into your situations, your relationships, your decision making. In all your ways, know him and know his ways. Know his heart so that you can respond and have the wisdom and the mind of Christ. I read this week that the spiritual journey is not a pole vault or a long jump. I love that metaphor. But it's a marathon, it's, it's running side by side, stride by stride with Jesus. That's the picture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And then what's the promise? He will, doesn't say he might, he will. He will, he will, he will make your, and there's the word, path. He'll make it straight. He'll make it straight. I don't know why, but for me, why does the straight path feel like a boring path? Is there anybody else kind of going, really? I trust God, I get a boring life. No thank you. Is there anybody else? Is, am I the only one who's ever felt that? Raise your hand if you've ever felt that. Come on, give me some love right now. Okay. What does that mean? He will make your, my path, your path straight. I was thinking about it this week. It's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. Back in 1984, my lovely wife and I jumped in our Volkswagen bus. And on the way out of town from Santa Cruz, we stopped at the dog pound and, and decided, hey, we're moving to Chicago. Let's get a dog. Some, some of you remember our dog, Willie. Willie was like the greatest dog ever. So we drive across country on Interstate 80. How many of you have been on Interstate 80? How many of you are going, 
It's the most exciting interstate in America. Now, most of us would go, it's straight and it's boring. But I started thinking about the metaphor and I started thinking about our drive. And some see that drive as boring. But as I thought about our drive, I started thinking about that straight inter interstate. We never got lost. We were never paranoid. We were never on that journey absolutely stressed out, panicked, angry. Uh, but we enjoyed freedom because we were on the straight path. There, there, a lot of the decision-making was taking, taken away from us. We knew where we were going. And I really believe this in life. It's not just where you're going. It's who you're with. 40 hours in the car with the person that you're madly in love with? That's awesome. And I'm not talking about Willie right now. I'm talking about my wife. Stopping at DQ for milkshakes. And then here we are driving through Nebraska, you know? It's like, there's nothing there. You'd say, this is boring. And my wife goes, Potter, Nebraska exit. I think that's where my dad grew up. Oh, man, I take the exit. We go into Potter, Nebraska. It's a one street town. I mean, there's nothing there but this old little pharmacy and a little counter. Like, this is like, going back to the 1920s where they have the milkshake stand and you, you know that kind of old school pharmacy and we go in there, we sit down and we have a conversation with the, these two people and she says, yeah, my dad grew up here. Oh, who's that? Oh, his name was Leroy. Oh yeah, Leroy, we know Leroy. It's like, what? Yeah, he went to the army and this and that. And, and it was like, this is so fun. This is such an adventure. Here I am with my life partner, my wife, going across I-80, and I'm having the time of my life. I'm not stressed. I'm not lost. I'm not worried. I'm not angry. I'm enjoying our relationship. I think that's the metaphor. He will make your path straight. You're with him. You're with Christ every step of the way. And when he is with us, present in us, around us, in front of us, before us, it's all about perspective. In your life and in my life, enjoying the journey we think, oh, no, no, it's more fun over here. No, no, no. The straight path can be an adventure. And like I said last week, there are hills. It may not be going that way, but it does. there are times on this straight path. We're going up, we're going down. We're going straight. It feels uneventful. But in those seasons where it feels uneventful, it's all about the relationship. It's all about enjoying the journey with the life giver, Jesus. And so... This morning, I want to ask you as I close, as you think about your path that you're on, where are you on your journey? As you think about this metaphor, maybe you're at a place where you're going, I've taken a detour spiritually. I've lost my way. I, I, I'd love to get on I-80. I'd love to simplify my life. I'd love to get rid of all of the, the rage, the anger, the resentments. I'd love to get rid of the, the bitterness that fills my heart. I know I'm making bad decision after bad decision. I'm tired of that life, a life of regrets. And the Lord says, trust me with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, your own feelings, what you think's best. Trust him and he will make straight your paths. He'll transform you into a healthy person, your relationships into healthy and whole relationships. Who doesn't want that? I'll tell you who doesn't want that. Dumb and dumber. Don't walk out of here being these two guys. Let me lead us in prayer. We're going to come to the table this morning. I love what the theologian and writer Miroslav Volf wrote this week about the communion table. He said, if you find yourself worthy to take communion, don't do it. If you find yourself worthy to take the Eucharist, communion, the Lord's Supper, don't do it. But if you feel unworthy, then rest in the unworthiness of Christ and take his body and blood. He is worthy. He is the one who gave his life. And so, Father, we pray as we come to this table. It's for, for strugglers. It's for, for those of us 
We want to be on the straight path, but we are prone to wander. We're prone to drift. We're prone to the detour. We're prone to the shortcut. We think we know better. We trust our feelings more than we trust you. We trust our friends more than we trust you. We trust the culture more than we trust you. We trust Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie more than we trust you. What's wrong with us, God? In this moment, we say, Lord, we return to you and we repent. We come back and we partake of, of your body and your blood. Forgive us and receive us afresh and anew and lead us on the straight path. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen.